Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our The Mountains Are Calling box, okay? Our, I don't have a project to show you because this is one of those tutorials where I actually try something new and I talk you through my process of how I approach a new project in a painting and we kind of just do it together. And my hope with that is that as you learn from us through these, eventually you can get to a space where you feel confident approaching projects on your own. That's the goal here. That's, that's what we're trying to do. So um, our recipient this month is going to Maggie in Florida. Now Maggie is an active member of our LMA community. She's been a llama and she's just so sweet and generous. And unfortunately, her and her husband lost everything in Hurricane Ian, Ian um, all of her belongings and also all of her art supplies. And um, I mean, that's just heartbreaking to lose, to lose your home, to lose everything. And um, so we just wanted to send Maggie a big art hug to let her know that her community is thinking about her and we really care about her and um, we just want to send her some love. Love okay? it. Love it. So for this project, I thought that we would paint um, balancing stones. If you've done our other tutorials in the project, you'll see that we painted stones in our Mountain Treasures project. And so now I'm going to attempt to do um, painting the balancing stones on top of each other. Okay? Let's do it. All right, so as you can see here, I have a used palette. I'm just using the colors that came in that month's box and um, we're gonna get like muddy colors and stuff like that. So I'll just use whatever's here. Please remember watercolor is reconstitutable. That means when it dries, if you just add water to it, it reactivates it. So you don't have to clean your palette every time, especially if you're using the same colors. Okay, so. I am feeling a little bit edgy today and I don't really feel like I need to sketch this out. I want to do a pile of rocks on top of each other with it getting it bigger in size, okay? Now rocks and stones come in all different shapes and sizes so that's why I feel comfortable just jumping in, not sketching anything out. Um, I'm embracing the wonkiness and the unknown in this project. Now if you want to take the time to sketch it out, no problem at all. Go ahead and do it. If you're like me. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the top and then I'm just gonna work my way down. Um, one thing that I am gonna do, how I think I'm gonna approach this is I really, really love the technique of wet on wet where you paint a wet object and then you touch it and paint another wet object and the colors kind of blend and bleed together. That's how I'm gonna approach these rocks. And then after they're dry, we'll go back in and kind of define the edge and the shadow to make it actually look like they're stacked on top of each other, okay? So let's just grab a color. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but like pebbles and rocks and stones can come in all different colors and shapes. So really I'm going for like just muddy colors here. Like, I don't know, let's just see. So let's start, I'm gonna start probably about an inch down from my paper and do that. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go and kind of like round it out. And then let's grab another color. Let's go with more of a sepia, maybe a little bit of fuchsia in there to get kind of like a reddish rock. And I'm gonna touch it. Smooth it out. So again, we're letting things kind of bleed and be a little bit messy. And then I'm just gonna go right into the next one. I'm gonna make this one thinner. And if you're like, rocks wouldn't actually balance like that, you're probably right. <laughs> Get out of here with your physics. <laughs> but this is a painting. So when it's wet like this, I'm just gonna drop in whatever color. I use like a dark gray. And you see how that kind of red is bleeding through? I love that. Okay. And let's do, I, I really like the stones that have like a blue hint to them. So I'm gonna grab more blue along with my gray. And actually I feel like I can get a smaller one right here. So I think I'm just going to right now, 
Oh, that's like a green. Let's do more blue. I feel like that top rock should just be a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, now using that same kind of bluish gray color. Let's do another one. Now the longer you let the rocks dry before you add, like touch it to the next color, the less the colors will like bleed and mix. So you guys can decide how much you want them to kind of blend and bleed together. I like a lot of blending and bleeding. I think that's cool. Um, <clears throat> so I like to work quickly. Okay, and I feel like there's room for one more skinny. Let's do more of a reddish brown. I just think these colors are so lovely. Just these kind of natural tones. There's something really meditative too about this. Okay, so there's my rocks. If you want, while it's wet and you want like a little bit of texture, you can go in there and just drop it in. Now remember that rocks don't always have speckles. Some of them maybe feel like they have edges. So I'm just like lifting up with a paper towel on some. This one I got a really gorgeous bloom, which I think adds to the line of the rock almost. Like if you think think about rocks, sometimes they do have that, that um, hard lines in there. I'm trying to... Striation. Striation, maybe. And then, if you even want to use a dry brush on some of this. That, so you get kind of like a uneven line. If you have um, like clean wrap or saran wrap, that could be a really cool Thing to see what kind of textures you get. I mean, projects like this are just a really lovely way of exploring different ways to get texture. Okay. And salt. Ooh, salt would be a really good one. There was another one that I saw recently that I was like, oh, that's cool. You could do like a scraping method. You can use like bubble wrap. Rice, maybe. Would rice work? Maybe rice. I... Maybe it absorbs too slow. I don't know. I'm sure it would still leave some sort of marks. Okay. Now that we've put in our rocks, I want you to take a second and recognize how this feels um, like kind of more flat, right? Like at this point, we can't tell that these are separate objects really stacked on top of each other because we don't have a lot of value variation. We do a little bit where there were some blooms, um, but besides that, there's not a lot going on. And this is the magical part. I'm going to show you that by adding another value underneath for a shadow, it automatically will create a sense of form. So then these feel like physical 3D objects on top of each other. So I gotta make sure this is dry. And basically, I want to put a little bit of a shadow line on the rocks along the bottom. Okay, so here's my green rock. I mixed a little bit of black in with green on here, so it kind of matches the hue a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of separate it. And then I'm going to rinse my brush, and using just water, I'm going to spread out that shadow. Now, Remember that sometimes when you add water to an already dried surface, you're gonna get a little bit of a bloom. That is okay. 
we're okay with that because these rocks are kind of funky anyway. If you don't like it, then what you can do is just kind of blend the whole thing out. Okay, so that separated that just like that. And that's what we're gonna do on all of them. So basically on all of these rocks, we're just gonna go in, put a dark value where those rocks meet and then spread that color out. So it's kind of like this shadow transition. And I just realized something. Here, my rock ended and then it like juts up to meet the rock above it. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel real. So I'm just going to add a little lip to that rock so it feels a little bit more like it's resting on it. And all, like, all, okay, look at this. Look at the bottom, and then look at the top. Damn. Just by adding that little bit of a shadow, just two brush strokes, and it separates it. Damn. So great, so wonderful. And honestly, we're not spending a lot of time creating a ton of depth on our actual rocks themselves. I'm really just trying to separate the rocks, but um, if you are interested in creating something like that, then just look at pictures of, of rocks themselves and notice where there are value changes and um, apply that to your painting. And then that way the rock themselves can feel more um, three-dimensional as well as feeling stacked on top of each other. Now I did look up the meaning of stacked, um, like stones and rocks. And I believe it is a way to mark, like mark places. Trails. And yes, yeah, trails and um, for burial mm -hmm. sites or like in memorial or in memory. Um, which I thought was beautiful. Okay, we just have two more rocks. So this one, so, and depending on how your rocks kind of bled and where the colors went, that can determine the shape of your rocks. It does not have to be like a straight line across. Like if you look at this one, the gray bled into that blue. So you see that curved line right there? So instead of like cutting it off, I'm actually gonna honor that color. <laughs> and put that shadow in right underneath it. And then blend it out. And it needs to be a little bit darker. Now remember where two points meet, that's gonna be the strongest of the shadow. So sometimes I go in and just add like an extra little bit of darkness right on the edge. And here we kind of have a natural bloom. So I'm just gonna follow that. And just so you know, the more values you add to this, the more range of values you add to this, like you can probably go back and do that a couple more times. And it's just going to create more and more form. So you can make this as simple or as detailed as you want. There is a lot of opportunity here. And I like this project because even if you were to just leave it without adding the shadows, I still feel like people would be able to look at this and tell what it was and what was happening, which is always really wonderful for anybody painting anything because then it gets, just gives you freedom. So you can keep it as simple as you want or you can go as detailed or realistic as you want. And then for the last finishing touch, I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna ground it. So I'm just gonna use just gray, which is black with water added to it. 
and just kind of along the bottom and around the side. We're just gonna add a little bit of a ground. I'm just gonna lighten up behind here because I don't want it to feel like a table. I want it to kind of like fade away. Fade away. And then maybe if you're feeling like it, you can do little dry brush textures because rocks themselves have like marks on them and different, different things, you know, I'm not going to get too into it. I'm tempted to, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. So that's it. That's our project. Beautiful. Something very simple and um, straightforward, but a lot of opportunity for there to be variation for you guys to experiment with textures and colors and color mixing and let's just see what we can make. Um, and for those who don't know what our Let's Make Art Matter program is, what we try and do is in all of our monthly boxes, we put in a pre-stamped and pre-addressed watercolor postcard and we choose someone or we leave it up to you to send it to someone that's special to you and our whole mm, the whole point is to show that as a community we can show love and kindness through art everybody experiences really difficult things really wonderful things and really difficult things that is the way of life and I feel like when we take the time to recognize and see someone else for what they're going through and say I'm thinking about you um, it just can make the world a kinder place and words and saying things are really scary uh, I have a hard time you know letting someone know when they're, you know, just saying, I'm sorry, or I'm thinking about you. It just doesn't feel like enough. And so my hope is that with painting something, it's our way of letting someone know that we're showing up with for them. We're here for them and we don't have the right words and we will never have the perfect words, but they are not alone. And so even if you don't paint anything else, I hope that you paint this. And if there is anyone that you think could benefit from receiving postcards, we do have a nomination form on our website. If you go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom, there should be a nominate there button for Let's Make Art Matter. And um, I just want to thank you for taking the time to do this. Um, we get some messages back from some recipients who just say thank you so much. And the reality is, is it's not us. It's you. It's you guys that take the time out to do this for someone else. You take 20 minutes out of your day to paint a postcard for someone that you don't personally know just to let them know that you care. I mean, that's not me or Michael or whoever. That's you. And so I just want to say thank you for making it matter. Um, and I think that's all I got to say. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.